everyone, so today we're doing a QA. and a I popped up a post on my Instagram and I asked you guys to throw your questions there and that I will answer them. I always think Q&A intros are so boring, so let's jump straight into the questions. What is your natural hair colour and are you Australian or do you have other ancestors because your surname sounds a little bit German? My natural hair colour is dark brown and I naturally have like black eyebrows and black eyelashes, that's why I don't mind having my hair very dark. And are you Australian or do you have other ancestors? My dad's side of the family are German. So that's why my last name sounds German. If you could go back in time, what era would you like to visit? I'm gonna have to swap your question around because I don't know if I'd want to go back. I want to go forward in time. I always, like, I want everything to be futuristic. Like at GMM, like, the theme has to be future. And we put like LEDs in and tried to make it all minimal looking. I want to see what's coming next. I want to see, you know, the end of these technological advances that people have just started working on. Um, I want there to be like a cleaner, greener future, but at the same time have this amazing technology. So I really want to see that. What do you think is your greatest strength and weakness? I'm going to go ahead and actually say that my greatest strength and my greatest weakness are the same thing. And that is the fact that I don't look back. So with everything I do, whether it's makeup, whether it is filming, whether it is an assignment, with you know any of that, I try and push myself to be better every single time. And with everything I do, it's not that I want to be the best, but it's that I want to be my best. And so often I see people getting complacent and they'll get to a certain level and then they'll just coast and they'll just sit along that line, that mid line. And the difference between being good at something and being great at something is the ability to push yourself off that line and drive and be better. Why sit here when you have the ability to be up here, you can be so much more if you work and you push yourself and you find your flaws with what you're doing and you correct them and try again and try harder next time. But the weakness side of that for me, and I would encourage you to try and do this because I'm still learning to do this, is to actually look back. I'll post a video and I'll never watch it again. When I was doing photography, I would do a photo shoot, I would sit there, edit it. Afterwards, I would post it online, then I would pick it to pieces. I'd find every single flaw in it and then I'd never look at the photos again and next time I just try and do better. And the whole time I'd be looking at the people who inspire me, I'd be looking at fantastic photographers, I'd be looking at you know movie directors and going, look what they're producing, how come I can't do that? Because I am a bit of a perfectionist in that regard. I look at the greatest possible example in my mind, like the people that I think are amazing, and I go, that's where I wanna be. And I don't sit back and go, well, a year ago, I was doing you know something a lot worse than what I'm doing now and I find that's the weakness side of it is forgetting to look back and acknowledging what you have achieved same thing goes for you know fitness and weight loss and all of that sort of stuff remember to look at what you've done any advice on how to deal with hate and not letting criticism bring you oh it's Alyssa okay you guys I'm gonna link this girl's website in the description box she makes like futuristic minimalistic awesome clothing. I own some of her swimwear and if you like my Instagram you'll probably like hers too. Eh, focus on the phone, not on my face. Hate is a funny thing because sometimes I read comments from haters and I'm like this is pointless, you were just bored and I delete it. And then sometimes I see a comment and I'm like wow, like you know a lot, well you think you know a lot about my life so you've been watching a lot of my videos, you sit and you take so much time out of your day to watch mine. And I just have to feel sorry for them. It's so strange. You'll find if someone actually doesn't like you, they'll pretend you don't exist. You won't even be a blip on their radar. But when someone is like they like you, but they are really, really jealous and they are really, really insecure, that's often when they'll attack you. People who actually dislike you won't bother to come near you, they won't bother to give you the time of day. That's what I find funny, particularly being online, like with a YouTube channel, someone will come and they'll watch my video and then they'll leave me this big comment, I'm like, well, your watch counts towards my views, which helps me get paid. And I had this comment the other day and it was so long and so in depth about my life and it just broke my heart, like not for me, because it just reminded me of all the awesome stuff that I've been able to achieve because they were sitting there listing it off. But for them, it's like, wow, like what, what are you doing? These people have too much time and especially Alyssa, like if you're getting hate, because I've seen what you're doing, I follow her online and it just means that People want to be doing what you're doing and they don't know how. If you can meet that hate with a kind touch, 
then do it because chances are the reason they are lashing out like that is because they don't have a support network around them. They feel like they're out there alone and they can't do this because either they don't have someone to help them or they feel that luck's not on their side. It depends on what sort of locus of control they have. They probably have an external locus of control and they'll think, oh, I can't do it because I'm not lucky enough. No one gave me money to do it. Um, you know, this is stopping me, that's stopping me, instead of a person who's controlled internally by their own thoughts going, well, I can do this and I can get around this and I can change my destiny. Meet those people with support rather than lashing back. If you can't meet them with support, delete it, block them. Because like I was saying again, if someone actually hates you, they want nothing to do with you. The people that will give you hate want to be like you or want something that you have that they don't. The criticism completely depends on who the criticism is actually coming from. If there is someone who is more successful than you in whatever they're critiquing you in, take that advice on board. That is free business advice. Take it and run with it. It doesn't mean that you have to do exactly what they say, but take it on board. If the criticism is coming from someone who doesn't have anything to do with what you're doing. So for example, like Alyssa in your situation, it potentially is regarding like your clothing, your designs. If someone who is quite successful in the fashion industry is critiquing you, take it. If it's, you know, Mr. Joe Blow off the street who doesn't really know how to dress or doesn't even understand your style, it doesn't mean anything. People always want to share their opinion and they always want to be right and they always want to be listened to. Listen, don't have to take it on board. Is it possible to be a minimalist while still using a color palette both within your clothing and home decor? I notice lots of minimal pages I follow focus on black and white styling, so just curious. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I think a lot of people just focus on the black and white styling because one, that's sort of appealing to a lot of people, particularly people like me. So for example, because my wardrobe is so small, I just deal with black, white and grey because it's very easy to swap between. You don't have to worry about colour matching, you just have to worry about shape and texture. I used to only have black, like just all black clothing, but then I found that was a little boring so then I incorporated the uh, white and the grey. I think it's the same sort of thing that happens with a home. Uh, a lot of people who are more visually inclined, I guess, will look at a space and figure out how to curate it. So. Even if people really love colour, they'll still look at a space and figure out, okay, well I can place these colours here, I can place this object here, and visual people just tend to curate their spaces like that. I find, for me personally, because I don't own too much and I try to make things more versatile, scrapping the colour is just the easiest way to do that. Um, it makes the space very clean, it makes the palette very easy to work with, and if I am buying something, I do have to consider it. I have to go, well, is it, you know, does it fit my theme and do I actually need it? When did you move out and how did you save up? I lived in the house I grew up in until I was 21, which I thought was so late and I was like, oh my god, I have to get out of here, I'm an adult. So, um, I had a part-time job and I was studying as well and I was always putting away part of my paycheck. That's just something that I've been taught to do for a long time, like a tip that my mum gave me a long time ago. So I was always putting away part of my money and I remember I decided with a friend to move out and the next week we found a place and moved out. With that job, even though it was a part-time job, it was a good company and they did pay me really well. Uh, I was also on, taking on shifts so I would work like regular shifts but whenever there were spare hours that would pop up I would put my hand up to take the extra hours because they'd pay like a penalty higher rate or I'd work on the weekends and things like that because the weekends paid a higher rate. It's not like, because I had days off during the week so working weekend didn't bother me very much. What's some of your advice for minimizing when you can't change the walls or floor of your home? Don't need to change the walls or floor, I'm assuming that you're talking about like color or texture or something like that because it might not be white. You don't have to have like white or grey or black or... I know I show a lot of that and I know a lot of the other minimalist like YouTubes, blogs, whatever show a lot of that. That's because we find it pleasing. Eventually you can have a space like that of your own. You'll just have to be patient. But as for minimizing, go for your life. You can declutter your wardrobe. You can cull your shoe collection. You can cull your makeup. You can get rid of a lot of your possessions. You can minimize your time. You can manage your schedule more effectively. There's a lot of other aspects to minimalism rather than just the whole aesthetic side of things. I hope I didn't go too overboard answering those questions. Some of them struck a few chords in me. Anyway, it was super nice to catch up with you guys again, and I will speak to you in the comments section below. If you are new, don't forget to hit subscribe. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!